Hi, I'm Oliver Kim from the website microbehunter.com. Um, today I'd like to try out a new hand microtome which I bought myself a few days ago. I have not used it a lot, I have to admit, um, so it's going to be uh, also one of the first tries uh, for myself. Um, I'm going to try to cut a few carrots uh, with a microtome and then, um, yeah, we'll, we're going to have a look at the results, okay? So let's get started. The first thing that we have to do is, of course, we have to mount the hand microtome on the table. And now you're probably not going to be able to see this because I have to adjust the camera. Okay, and there's a little clamp over here, and I'm going to mount the microtome with a clamp, the microtome holder with the clamp to the table. And I'm also going to mount the top part over here. Okay. And. I'm going to tighten the screw, okay, and um, I think uh, we're set and uh, we're ready to go. I now mounted the microtome uh, to the table with a clamp, and uh, in the hole in the center over here, we have to, I have to put the specimen uh, to be sliced. In this case, of course, as I just said, the carrot. Now, if you make little carrot pieces like this over here, and if you try to put them in here, I mean. Uh, they're not going to stay in place. They're too small and it's kind of unstable and it's impossible to cut it properly. Now what some people do is the following, they add some padding material left and right. Um, for example styrofoam, which I would definitely not recommend because it really makes the knife dull. It dulls the knife very quickly. Um, some other people use um, elderberry marrow from the center of, of, uh, of, uh, of an elderberry stem. Um, but generally this microtome is designed uh, to accept samples that were uh, that are um, embedded in, in paraffin. Um, because I don't have that, we somehow have to uh, manage to put the carrot right into the center here. And essentially that's going to be now our task. How can I cut the carrot in such a way that um, I'm able to get it in here uh, without any play and uh, very stably. Now supplied with a microtome uh, came a little uh, brass cylinder over here and this uh, brass cylinder actually serves as a mold for the paraffin for uh, embedding the sample in paraffin. Now I'm going to use this mold over here um, as, uh, and I'm going to use the so-called cookie cutter principle and I'm going to simply use this mold over here to cut round pieces of carrot okay and then these round pieces will fit right into the center here okay so let's uh, let's do this first okay Let's make, let's cut out a small piece of carrot over here. Uh, I broke off a piece here on the side. Let's try it again. So, and now what I'm going to try to do is the follow. I'm going to take this here and I'm going to try to make a round piece. It takes a little bit of force, okay, but generally it should work. It's not a very nice looking piece over here. So I'm going to cut this off here. Okay. And I've got a very nice round piece. I know this is probably not the way it's intended to be, but nevertheless, um, this part will now fit into the center of the microtome. Okay, over here I've got my little piece of carrot, which you just made. I lower the central piston by turning the screw. I place the carrot into the specimen holder and now I'm going to try my first uh, microtome cuts. So let's see um, how, how well it works. Okay, so I take the microtome knife and I carefully slice horizontally. I horizontally carefully slice uh, away the top part here of the carrot. So let's see how well this works. I'm, I found out it's good to apply a little bit of pressure so that I do not lift out the, the carrot as I cut through uh, as I cut through it. So let's do this like this. It goes a little diff, it's a little tough to go. Okay, you gotta be really careful. I did not get a completely horizontal cut. I did lift out the carrot. Maybe you can see it here a little bit on the edge. Yeah, so I have to turn it out a little bit and I have to try it again. Be careful. Okay, this is a little bit, a little bit better. So, uh, when you've got a 
completely horizontal surface, completely flat surface. So it's, it should be flush with the with the with the micro uh, microtome top here. Okay, and then I can start to make some cuts. Now this was not a very nice one. Okay, maybe it was not completely flush. I turn it out a little bit, and yes. Okay, I can start to make. Okay, I can start to make the first cut, and then of course over here I've got a glass of water. And in here, I'm going to drop my specimens. I turn it out again a little bit. And very lightly, ah, this, that's difficult. Very lightly, you can go across it and you can try to cut out small sections of the carrot, okay? You gotta be really careful with this knife. I mean, okay, it's a little bit thicker on the side here, but the central part here is just fine. So I'm going to use this as well. Okay, and basically I, uh, what you do is you just keep on doing this until you've got enough, obviously. Yeah, because not every cut is the same. And some samples are simply better than others. So if you go quantity, you may also get quality. Okay, this seems to be a nice one. Okay, uh, notice I, I like to use my fingers um, and not uh, forceps. The reason is because with my fingers I do not have, uh, yeah, I'm not able to, to damage the cells as much. Okay, so yeah, and basically all you do is you just continue doing this. Um, now, um, uh, some general remarks here. This microtome originally was designed to not accept samples which fill the whole central portion here. Originally, this microtome was designed to accept a paraffin block, so a small piece of sample material after fixing and dehydration and processing the sample, the specimen, um, has to be embedded in paraffin. Paraffin is some kind of a wax-like substance and this paraffin block containing the specimen should actually be placed into the central part here and not simply be placed into the central part but also be uh, connected to the piston so it's not uh, so it's fixed in there. The piston if you remember um, if you've seen before contains this type of a, a grid so the paraffin is actually filling out the grid here as well, so it's not able to, to lift the, the whole paraffin block um, out like it was possible with the carrot. So, and then basically, then you make uh, cuts through the paraffin and this paraffin and later has to be removed. Um, why am I using carrots? Because if you use carrots, these carrots can also serve as a specimen holder. So um, if you do not want to bother making paraffin cuts, for some small specimens, it is possible to simply do the following. I'm going to take over here. You're not able to see this now. I'm going to cut the carrot in half like this, okay? And you're able to now take small leaves or let's say needles from a pine tree or whatever, place them between the carrot halves and then put the whole thing into the central part in here, okay? So the carrot actually now acts as a support. Um, so that's the reason why I think uh, it's, it's up, no, I dropped it, <laughs> and that's why I think it's it's a good idea to to practice making thin cuts through a carrot first before we proceed on to the next step. Okay, um, yeah, I think I'm going to just leave it uh, with that. I'm going to show you also some some uh, at the end of this video. I'm also going to show you a couple of pictures of uh, some of the cuts that we just made. Okay, I wish you all the best.